Hi everybody, this is Lara with your weekly video for Bitcoin for the week beginning Monday 27th of March 2023. I'm recording that well, probably after all, at the end of the Monday session, but we've got data for the last week and it's a pretty small range week. It means the Elliott Wave count remains essentially the same and I was expecting pretty strong resistance about 29,000. That's exactly what's happening. I think we're going to get a pullback here before price again approaches that area and is finally able to break through. It needs to do a little bit more work before it does that. So I've got two areas for support expected, 24719.58 or below that 22622.02. The bigger picture for the Elliott Wave count remains extremely bullish for Bitcoin. This is the weekly chart. I'll update the monthly chart probably um, after another week when we get data for March. and I can have actually something to update on the monthly chart. The bigger picture for Bitcoin sees a primary degree first wave within a cycle degree third wave over here at the all time high and this bear market lasting just over a year, 53 weeks in duration, a double zigzag for primary two. When two ends, three begins, primary three may only subdivide as an impulse. Within it, intermediate one and two may be complete. If my labeling here is wrong, I may need to move this down one degree. It may not be as may not be bullish enough but if we do get a continuation of intermediate two if it's an expanded flat a b c and it continues lower i'd look for really strong support at the upper edge of the bear market channel intermediate two if it were to continue lower may not move beyond the start of one below 15480.69 i'm expecting that low now to remain intact this bear market trend line was important, draw it from the all time high to the first major swing high in the bear market, place a parallel copy on the first major swing low. As price approached this trend line, it found resistance, there's a little pullback in here, it breaks through, it finds support, moves up and away, a deeper, stronger test of support and a stronger move up and away. This trend line is really technically significant now and price is behaving very typically about this line. This supports the bullish wave count, this behaviour. Let's take a look now at the daily chart. We're going to look, I think we're going to look at all of intermediate one. This low back down here, the end of primary two and the start of primary wave three is this point down here. Intermediate wave one subdivides beautifully as a five wave impulse, minor one, two, three, four, five. The third wave has a beautiful curved look to it. This is absolutely typical behavior for Bitcoin. The strongest portion of this impulse is the third wave and the histogram here shows the middle of the third wave. Following a five up, there was a three down. This is a double zigzag. I'm labeling it intermediate two. First zigzag in the double, X, second zigzag in the double. From this low to this high, this subdivides beautifully as a five wave impulse, another first wave. And now I'm expecting a continuation of an expanded flat for minor wave two. Three wave structure for A, quick zigzag for B, now expecting a five wave structure for C to continue lower. I have two targets for minor wave two support. I'm putting it on the first target, but the second is just probably about equally as likely, if not maybe slightly more likely, but coins second waves do tend to be pretty deep. This chart is on a semi-log scale, so the logarithmic function has been applied, so this is not arithmetically correctly a 0.382 and 0.618 Fibonacci ratio, and I'll only do this for cryptocurrencies because of the extreme volatility. My first expectation for minor two would be the log function of the 0.382 ratio at 24719.58. If minor two gets there and either the structure is incomplete or price keeps on falling, then attention turns to the second lower target, the log function of the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio at 22622.02. Minor 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 below 19597.37. And again, I try to explain this every week and I don't know that I'm actually getting the right words. This is not a target, this is a minimum expectation. When I look back at Bitcoin's price history with a full complete Elliott Wave count and I look at the length of its third waves in relation to its third waves and I calculate that and I put it all in a table, the shortest previous third wave we can see was only 5.71 times the length of its counterpart first wave. The longest is over 50 times the length of its first wave. And so let's expect 
same, same, different. Let's expect my primary 3 is going to be at least 5.71 times the length of primary 1. So I will expect it to reach at least 390171.46. I hope that language is it's as clear as I can make it. It's not a target. It's my minimum expectation. A target, which I will try and calculate later on, will probably be a lot higher than that. On the weekly chart, instead of primary wave 1 over here, what if primary 1 is incomplete? And what if this was part of an expanded flat for intermediate 4 within primary 1? This is a popular wave count out there. I judge it to have a pretty low probability. I would rather not publish it. I'm only publishing it because it's so popular online and I want to show you why I judge it to have a low probability. Cycle 2, which you can't see, it's off to the left of the chart. It was the bear market from the 2017 high to the 2018 low. It lasted 51 weeks, almost a year. Here, intermediate 4, 2 degrees lower than cycle 2, is much longer lasting. It's lasted 81 weeks in duration. It's the proportion between waves of the same degree and different degrees, which give a wave count what we call the right look. And especially at a high degree like this, at intermediate, primary and cycle, we should see reasonable proportion. So, with intermediate force so much longer lasting than cycle 2, this is an unlikely wave count. Also, it would mean that cycle 2 sorry, that within primary wave 1, intermediate 4 is much longer lasting than intermediate 2 as well. It's pretty common for Bitcoin's fourth waves and second waves to not be equal in duration, but only the other way around. It's common for the fourth waves to be brief and shallow, and the second waves to be more deep and time-consuming. When it's the other way around, the probability is pretty low. Possible, but a low probability. So all of that means that the last wave count, which sees primary 1 over here and primary 2 over here, has a much higher probability. On the weekly chart, the last completed week, a really small range week, a little doji moving price ever so slightly higher, higher, high, higher, low, but the week's closed as a doji. We'll see how the next week closes. It could be... Uh, clo going to, if it closes with a red body and moves back reasonably into the body of this candlestick, we'd have an evening doji star. Probably shouldn't um, anticipate that. All we can say right now is there's the strong green candlestick which had good push from volume, hitting resistance exactly as expected. About 29,000 is really strong. A little doji means a pause on its own. It's not a reversal pattern. Let's see how the current week that's just started this Monday completes and then we'll know if we have a reversal pattern. Right now we do not. We just have a little pause. The doji also comes with lighter volume, so upward movement was pushing price higher, and then for the last completed week, a decline in volume shows weakness, exactly as you'd expect around really strong resistance at 29,000. No signal from on balance volume, ADX still indicating there's an upward trend, still in an early stage. RSI and money flow are not overbought, there's still a long, long, long way to go before this trend becomes extreme. There will be consolidations and pullbacks along the way, and I expect we're having a pullback that's just begun now. ATR now just starting to show a little increase as price moves higher. Stochastics overbought, but when the market's trending, we use RSI and money flow, not stochastics. And I leave this here. Please don't assume that there is a relationship between the S&P 500 and Bitcoin. The correlation coefficient between these two sets of data shows that there absolutely is not. On the daily chart... Here we have upward movement, we have a bearish engulfing candlestick pattern which has come in the context of upward movement. It has pushed from volume and so this supports the Elliott wave count that expects we're going to get some consolidation or pullback. Very strong resistance at 29,000. Support below now 24,500. Overall, at the end of this upward movement, some decline in volume also supports the Elliott wave count that expects we're going to get a pullback or consolidation. Watch the range with from on balance volume quite carefully. This is a technically significant range now. A break above resistance would be bullish. A break below support would be bearish. Right now, it's range bound and not giving us a signal. But it's setting up to give us a signal, so watch it carefully. ADX is declining. There's no clear trend. It's now above both the DX lines, but again, it's a very long way to go before an upward trend, if it does resume, would get extreme. Money flow. 
and RSI both neutral, stochastics returning to neutral, price moving down from resistance with no clear trend, and stochastics reached overbought here, let's expect a downward swing to support, about 24,500. That's it for me this week with your Bitcoin analysis. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend.